Hello, this is Jay White 3 and this is another new video about the F1 2017 season in real life. So I'm just in a sprint lobby here in a F1 2016 game. So yeah, I'm going to talk about my predictions for the Chinese Grand Prix that's happening this weekend. So let's get into it. And first of all, I think Lewis Hamilton is going to win, which, uh, yeah, he didn't last week, of course, in Australia as Vettel absolutely smashed everyone. But Hamilton, I just think Mercedes are too good around China. I think I saw a stat the last time they didn't get pole position was in 2011, which is a very, very long time ago. So yeah, that's a job to start for my teammate in first place, but never mind. And yeah, I just think Mercedes are gonna absolutely smash everyone. And everyone's gonna be disappointed because they think Ferrari's gonna be challenging the season, but I'm still pretty skeptical. I think Australia was a pretty much a one-off. And uh, hope, I, I imagine Mercedes will be too good for everyone in the uh, remainder of the season, if I'm honest. So yeah, Hamilton is the winner for me. And my second place pick is Valtteri Bottas, as, uh, as I've been alluding to. I think Mercedes is just really good. So Bottas will come second, I reckon, with relative ease. And Sebastian Vettel finishing off the podium, best of the rest. And as you would expect, he's, in, he's got the second best car. And he's probably the best driver on the grid. The closest to Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso, in my opinion. But yeah, so Vettel's finish off the podium. Lewis Hamilton, I think, will also get pole position. So, uh, yeah, Mercedes carrying on their pole streak, which has stretched back even before the hybrid era around China. So, yeah. And then the rest of the top ten, I've put Dan Ricciardo in fourth as he, he had a terrible week in uh, Australia, a terrible weekend. And I've been squeezing to that wall by the manor. And, uh, yeah, so Dan Ricciardo fourth. I reckon he'll beat the staffing, so he really motivated to try and make amends for what, happened, what went wrong. And, um in Australia, so yeah, it's not his home race of course anymore, like it was in Australia, so there's probably less pressure there. And then I reckon he'll get fourth from Max Verstappen, his teammate in fifth. Red Bull have the third fastest car quite easily. So I imagine they'll be just behind Vettel in his Ferrari. In sixth place I have Raikkonen because I just don't think he's gonna be at it. It's one of these weekends where like sometimes Raikkonen's got good, sometimes he hasn't. I also think I've got braking resist on, let me just check this. Wow, I, how did I notice that? I don't, my game's been glitching lately. I don't actually run braking assist. Uh, there we go. That's probably why I've been slow. And yeah, so Raikkonen in sixth place as I was carrying on. Uh, yeah, I reckon it'll be one of the weekends. He's not very much at it compared to his teammate Vettel, so he'll be actually get beaten by both Red Bulls as well as his teammate. In seventh place, we've got Carlos Sainz. And uh, yeah, I reckon he, should, he did well in Australia. Then he got eighth place as Toros, so it seems to be near the head of the midfield really along with Force India out of the corner cut but we'll gloss over it and yeah it's all Force India Perez in eighth rounding out the uh, the top eight followed by Nico Hulkenberg and Felipe Massa as I've had a bit of a big crash but yeah I've, I've gone for four different cars in the bottom four midfield teams which is pretty uh, questionable but now I think about it but never mind I reckon that'll be the order as uh, Sergio Perez did well yeah he proved it is possible to overtake with the new regulations in Australia making two quite uh, nice moves on the Toro so was early in the race. And then Hulkenberg and Massa rounding up the top 10. Hulkenberg just missed out in Australia, but he would have been in the top 10, I reckon, if he hadn't had a bad start. So if he, if he knows his start, he'll probably get top 10, I reckon, and then Felipe Massa. I think Australia, Australia was a bit of a fluke for Williams. They got sixth just by the virtue of having good top line speed, which meant Perez couldn't dive bomb him. So yeah, I reckon Williams won't do quite as well. And Lance Stroll is, of course, useless, so he's not going to get any of the points in that Williams. And then fastest lap I've actually gone for Valtteri Bottas because he proved at the, uh, in the last week in Australia, the drivers at the end of the race just started to go mental and set fastest laps for fun in like the last three laps of the race. I, I'm, it's correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Valtteri Bottas was one of the drivers who was set the fastest lap in succession. Though in the end it went to Raikkonen, but I'm pretty sure Bottas was one of the drivers who set it in the closing laps in the Australian Grand Prix. So here's my pick for the fastest lap in this race in China and then my position gained choice is Antonio Giovinazzi because as we saw in um, in Australia he's quite good at not crashing so I'm assuming the Sauber is going to be last in qualifying because they're pretty much the size cars by quite a lot so yeah if he um, gets that fastest lap just for fun and then I go into a wall so that's good but yeah Giovinazzi is my choice for the fastest lap not fastest lap position gain sorry as a, I also find it very interesting that Verline hasn't come back yet. So I don't want to read too much into it because there's been plenty of like journalists going, oh, he doesn't want to race an F1 because he's actually, because he missed it on the Mercedes seat and he just wants to get out now because the Salvas are terrible. But oh, that's gone well. I'm not reading too much into that because I think the main reason he's doing it, I think, is because last year we saw 
well, people assumed that basically he missed out on the Mercedes. What has happened here? An absolute car park's happened. He missed out on that Mercedes seat primarily because of uh, him being difficult to work with in manner. So now all he's trying to do is prove that he's mature as anything and absolutely just like let Jim and actually have the reins when it comes to like because he's thinking about the team more than himself, which is probably not the best thing to do, but it's what he's chosen to do, so you can't fault him for that. And yeah, Pascal Verline hopefully will be back at some point because I think he's very talented. And yeah, but Giovinazzi is my choice. Back onto the predictions, he's my prediction for the position gained. So yeah, that is going to be everything then. So that is my predictions for the Chinese Grand Prix. Subscribe if you want to see more. I, unfortunately, I can't do a review of the Chinese Grand Prix because I'm going on holiday this week. So unfortunately, that'll have to uh, maybe wait or I might not even bother doing one because it'll be like a week late. But yeah. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll be trying to do these every race and it's been JY3 and I will see you next time.